Well, welcome, folks. This is John Bergman. Hey, hi. It's Mr. Sams. Hey, you know, Mr. Sams, I was thinking. Hmm. You know, um, I was thinking about going on vacation. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where are you headed? I was thinking, I was going to go to Milwaukee. Milwaukee? Yeah, Milwaukee. Milwaukee like chemistry malls. Uh, my favorite place, Milwaukee. Uh, yeah, it's a good place. Yeah. I, I hear you've been thinking about getting a new haircut. I have, you know. I'm thinking about going back, bringing the mullet back. The mullet back. Uh-huh. You know, I've been thinking about getting a mole hawk. A mole hawk. Oh, yeah. yeah. We can pull the 80s haircut. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, how would that look? I don't know. That's a... Right? Like that? Oh, yeah. That looks wrong. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I agree. Hey, um... Uh, <laughs> What's your favorite movie? Um, I kind of like The Incredible Mole. Oh, I like that. You know, yeah, my good. favorite is The yeah. Last of the Mole Oh, that's a good one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always wondered, you know, I, I like to golf sometimes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You ever gotten a mole in one? You know, I've been working on that. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. Good. Okay, yeah. Okay, all right. Hey, folks. Uh, podcast 15.1. Were those the worst jokes you've ever heard in your life? But, um... <laughs> Hey, in chapter 15, this is what we're going to talk about. Common eye and effect. What are betters? Buffer capacity, titration, and pH curves, acid base indicators, oh, and the bells oh. ringing, solubility, equilibrium, KSP, and then the KSP quality oh, analysis. Oh, KSP. It's KSP grand. KSP is very grand. So, hey, if you would just take your notes and we can follow along. Hey, this one should be short. This is a pretty easy podcast. Yep. Hey. Common ion. What do you think common means? Common means it's the same. Something's the same. All right, so sometimes in an equilibrium solutions, they have one more than one ion, and that ion is called the common ion. So, for example, when you take sodium fluoride and you dissociate it, it mm-hmm. dissociates into? Na plus. Now, you must have a plus. Why do you need a positive? It's a dissociated ion, right. so it has to have a charge to be You must ion. have that charge. Now, Lee, I know you're listening. Lee, you must have the charge. Dun, 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 dun. Right, have the charge. Yep. Lee never leaves his charge, so I have to pick uh. it up. Okay, so sodium fluoride. So here's the kind of the deal here. So if you have this reaction, this is a, HF is a weak acid. Mm. So notice I have the double arrow right here. And the H positive, it breaks apart H's and F's. But if you were to add sodium fluoride... What does it actually do? You're adding sodium ions and fluoride ions. So what you're doing by spiking those fluoride ions, you're shifting the equilibrium. You see, what I often see students do is that if I, they say re, they have a mixture of HF and NAF. The common mistake I see is they write HF plus, plus. NAF. <coughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. That's very wrong. Don't do that, please. Okay, it's very bad. Because you see, HF has a partner. His partner is F, F negative. Minus. And we've always said partners must always, 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 always appear. Always? On opposite, always, always, yeah. On opposite sides. Yes. So notice that in this reaction, the HF is on the opposite side. It's the fluoride. Right. And so when you add sodium fluoride, you are essentially, as Mr. Sam said a minute ago, spiking the fluoride. It's like an equilibrium thing. It's actually going to drive your equilibrium back to the left because yep. you're adding a fluoride. You are not adding fluorides to the reactant side over here. You're rea- adding it to the product side. That's very, very critical. Very. Very critical. You screw that up, your host. Okay. Yeah. Hey, so let's um, do a little problem here. Actually, this is one we've done before, but you'll see how it applies in a moment. Yes. All right. So we have a solution of acetic acid. Acetic acid. Okay. CH3, COOH. By the way, that also could be written how else, Mr. Sam? Uh, H, C2, H3, O2. Same thing. Now, by the way, just for fun facts to know and tell, the reason they write it as CH3, COOH, yeah. it's an organic thing. It's a structural thing. It tells you about where the, mo- the atoms end up on the molecule. So this right here is the CH3. CH3 mm-hmm. is this piece right here. And then the COO. H. It actually looks like this when we do this Lewis structure. Yep. We'll learn how to do this when we do Lewis structures a little bit later. But this actually tells you the structure. This one doesn't tell you the structure. Nope. So this problem is just like an old chapter 14 problem. So if I have acetic acid, CH3, I'll write it this way, COOH, and that dissociates into CH3COO. It's actually this hydrogen here that breaks apart ours, and that needs a minus charge. charge. I was just about ready to plus say something. H positive. I, I, thought doing I, a th- I thought I'd give you a chance there. I was doing a Lee oh, thing yeah. on you just to see if Lee caught it. Yep. Did you catch it, Lee? Good. I'm <laughs> glad you did that time. All right. So this was a point point one molar. One molar. Of course, there's none of this. Here's none here. of this. Play the minus X game. So this is just like we've done for a long time. Mm-hmm. Long, long time. I've had a long, long time doing this. Okay. 
All right. We so need one more bit of information that's not given in the problem. That would be the Ka value. And that happens to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. How do you know that, Mr. Sanders? I've done acetic acid a million times over You've in these memorized problems. Memorized it. Now, you guys don't need to memorize that. No. That would be on the test. Eventually, it just kind of gets stuck in your brain and rattles around there. Over 0 0.10 minus x. So now, okay. of course, we get our solver out. Solver. And we take the solver. The solver x, if yep. you recall, is equal to the concentration of the hydrogen. Are we looking for pH or what are we looking for? Uh, we are looking for the percent dissociation. Percent dissociation. So x is the concentration of the hydrogen, which is, by the way, also the concentration of the C. H3COO negative. Got to have the charge. And X is equal to Mr. Sam's is solving I'm it on the solver. I'm frantically putting it on the solver. So we're here. waiting for his we fast are. Here calculator we are. skills. Here we are. Alpha solve. We have point zero zero one three three. So point double oh one three three molar. So of course percent dissociation, you take x and you divide by the initial concentration times the hundred. So point zero zero one three three divided by 0 0.10 times 100 gives you 1.33%. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Sure. That's 1.33%. Now, that's just a problem we've done before. Yep. Chapter 14 took a test on it, so this is easy. Why are you wasting our time? Because guess what we just did? Yeah, we led into this one. We are leading into this particular problem, and it teaches something conceptual. A mixture that contains 0.1 molar acetic acid, like we did, and... 0.1 molar sodium acetate. Now, what would be the common mistake that you would see? The common mistake would be to put those added together on the same side of the equation, but we don't want to do that. Like those. this? Yeah, like that. That is wrong. <coughs> because you see, what is the sodium acetate? You really, the sodium is irrelevant, ultimately. Right, sodium doesn't is do your, This is giving us a concentration of the acetate in the equilibrium expression. Yes. So we will rewrite our equilibrium expression, EH. C2H3O2. Now I'll switch back to the other one just because, I don't know, because I did. Makes H positive plus C2H3O2. And this is right. a nice problem. Yep. I, C, E. And we have point 0.1 one more point one zero. And we've done this, but guess what we've done? We also have Oops, point one did I forget, Lee? Oh. That's right, the charge. Oh, yeah. I didn't even notice that. I didn't either. Point one zero. You see, what I've got here is now we have an initial amount of acetate. Right. The point one zero. And there's still zero hydrogen. Right, because this is the, the starting. Then the equilibrium happens. Now we just do the same thing we've same done before. Thing. The only thing that's different is we now have something. We have an initial quantity over here. Yep. So plus x. So this is x. But this, of course, will be plus x. It'll be 0 0.10 plus x. So now we'll use our Ka, and it will be equal to x times the quantity 0 0.10 plus x over 0 0.10 minus x. That's a... I'm going to say 0 0.1. I think it's easier. And then the Ka, of course, is still 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, of course, you have to plug this in your solver. Now, by the way, when you plug this in your solver, I would do it this way. I would say 1.8 E negative 5 times 0 0.10 minus x, parentheses, minus x times 0 0.10 plus x. I think I got my pluses and minuses right, didn't I? I did. And that was set equal to zero. That's how I would type it into my calculator. And then I would ask what x is. And I think it's going to be awfully close to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Should be pretty close. And just make a check of my work here. Mr. Sams is furiously typing furiously, on the calculator. He's been in the clock. My kids used to call it the calculator. He's got the calculator working. Up so. 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. It's actually 1.7999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
It was what percentage? Was it was like 1.3 or something? Um, it was, yes, 1.33%. And now we had point point zero one eight. Point zero one eight percent with Much the less. mixture, right? Yeah. Why? Well, we we had extra acetate in there to begin with, so what that did is it's it's, it's not going to let the reaction go as far right, or another way of looking at it is it kind of shifts the equilibrium to the left. Yeah, that's exactly the point here. So we essentially we added the 0 0.10 acetate, and that shifts this reaction back to the left. Yep. By shifting the reaction to the left, there's more acetic acid and less H's. And yep. since X, the percentage is the X divided by the 0.1, since the X went down, the percentage goes down. So the more you add a common ion, the less, what would you say? Less dissociation. The less dissociation yeah. is going to occur. So that is critical to understand that concept. Okay, we want to cover another section. By the way, when I say 15.2, we're actually now in section 15.2 in your textbook. So right. if you're trying to follow along, we are using the Zumdahl 6th edition textbook for those of you out there in internet land. Um, um, but it, this is commonly taught of all over the country. Okay, a buffer. A buffer? Buffer. Should I buff my car? Yeah. I like to buff. I got one of those electric ones. You can oh, yeah. Like a yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's cool. I, no, I actually washed my car more often. I can actually use it. You know, some people have said that I am buff. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Who, who, who are those people? Lots of people. Oh, like, like, okay. Athletically, I'm buff. I got oh. muscles you got a lot coming more out of my muscles. Not really. I work on my You laugh too much. Tummy okay. Muscle. You shouldn't laugh so much. Your tummy muscles. Yeah. That's with cookies, I think. I know. It? Yeah. All right. What? But that's not what we're really talking about nope. today, are we? We're not talking about how buff no. Mr. Button is or how good you can buff your car. Nope. We are talking about buffers. Acid-based solutions okay. that are buffers. And what buffers do is they resist a change in pH. You guys have buffer systems in your body. Yeah. keeps your blood at a particular pH. keeps your cells at a particular pH. That that without them, if you drank a Coke... You would go into acidosis and you would die. So this is very good that we actually yeah. have buffered, our blood is buffered. And so, um, but there are two components to a buffer. I say a buffer must have a weak acid and number two, a significant quantity. Is the word quantity? Mm -hmm. Of the partner. Could it also be a weak base in its partner? Yes, hold on. So let's finish this okay. idea. So the part and who is the partner? The partner will be the conjugate base of the weak acid. Right. So, so basically, I like to think they have to have partners in significant quantities. And significant quantities I'm defining as by a factor of 10 of each other. Mm -hmm. So if I have a weak base or a weak acid, so if I have acetic acid, the one we've been kind of playing around with here just today, the partner is acetate. So if this concentration is one molar, this concentration could be, say, 0.1 molar, tenth of that, right? So yep. they're within a factor of 10. Or on conversely, it could also 10 be molar. 10 molar. So it has a range of molarities. And if you have a significant quantity of both partners, then it is a buffer. Now, I just did an acid partner, acid base partner. Mr. Sams, you were just alluding to that other one. What would you want to say there? Um, like ammonia. So you could have ammonia, which is a weak, weak base. base, and his partner, which ammonium. is... Ammonium. And ammonium is an H4. Plus charge. Oh, got to have that charge! I did that on purpose, actually. Mm. And that is a weak acid, or technically he is his conjugate, conjugate. Yeah. acid. But it has to be his partner. Now, you can't just yes. have another conjugate acid. No. You have to actually have the partners. And, of course, the, what is the same. difference between partners always? Uh, hydrogen. One hydrogen ion. Yes, hydrogen ion. So to go from ammonia to ammonium, you add a hydrogen.